Good morning and welcome to another weekly vlog. It is early on Sunday morning. We are getting all of our family members dressed, fed, and ready to go to church and we're gonna head out the door and I will check in with you guys after. Hello, we just got home from church and I am going to try on the um, Easter dresses that I was talking about in last week's vlog. So if you didn't watch that video, I ordered six dresses as options for Easter from Amazon Prime Try Before You Buy, which allows you to try six different garments. They have all kinds of things from shoes to accessories to clothing, all kinds of clothing, everything. And you can order six pieces maximum and then you get seven days to try them on and they don't charge your card until you go online at the end of those seven days and tell them which things you want to keep and which you don't. So I'll show you the options I have and then I'll try them each on and make a decision for what I am keeping and what I'm going to return. Hopefully I can find something that will suit me for Easter. All right, so here are the five options. This is, um, well, I'm not gonna go through them super, because I'll show you them once I put them on. My favorite are these first two. Um, so I'm hoping that one of those works out well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop them on and I'll show you. Okay, so here's the first um, dress and it has like fluttery sleeves and little, fluttery detail. It is a true wrap dress. It like comes through the side. The problem is that when I am nursing, I have a very large chest and there's a snap here for modesty, but it's gaping here in the middle, which doesn't feel like the right option for Easter. Um, but I do like it. And I think it's, I'm most self-conscious of my tummy right now because I just gave birth to a baby a few months ago. And um, I do feel like it detracts from that with what's going on up here and the ruffle and that. And I, like, I think it's a pretty, a pretty dress. I'm not, I think the next size up might be too big um, in the other areas, but I might try, this is a large, I might order, um, exchange it for an extra large if I don't like any of the others, because I actually really like the dress. I think with like some pretty heels, it would be really cute. Um, and maybe like some shapewear underneath to smooth it all out. But this is not, this is not going to work. So we've got to, all right, let's try the next one. All right, here's the second one. It is like a flowy midi dress. The lining comes down to about your knees and then the rest of it's just sort of flowy. Um, it has again, sort of like fluttery sleeves and it's actually like an animal print um, but it's like white and light pink. It also has the modesty snap, and this time there is enough room for the girls, so it doesn't look like it's being su super stretched. I just kind of knotted this up, but I could make this look cuter. I actually really like this. I think this is really cute. It comes in a light blue as well, which I feel like I might also like, um, but the pr pink is pretty for Easter, so I, li I like this one. I think this is I think this is pretty and soft and feminine and Eastery and sort of kind of what I was looking for. I need to sort of adjust everything, but I do like it. I do like it. I was looking for something kind of flowy, springy. I feel like this fits the bill in a lot of different ways. Okay, this one, I'm not really sure if I thought the pattern was different online, but I really do not like the pattern very much. Maybe it looked different online. Um, the cut is fine. It's not, mm, I just don't feel great in it. It has like a little tie. It's like a faux wrap. Um, so this is a definite no. Okay, so this one is like a green floral. It's not my favorite pattern ever, but I wanted, I thought something green would be interesting um, to just try on. It reminds me of spring. This is another true wrap dress. It is too booby for me. Um, I mean, like if it was a different event, maybe, but not for Easter. <laughs> But it is cute. I mean, it is, it is like a, I think it's a cute dress and, um, yeah, too, too much going on up here. Okay. I literally love this dress. It is a navy blue. Um, the straps are really loose right now, but they're, they can be adjusted. Um, there's like a second set of buttons that are tighter. So potentially you could wear a real bra under it if you could get them to kind of line up. And, um, it's a maxi dress. It's not at all, I don't think it's like the right option for Easter, but I do think for um, summertime, like just as a cute loose dress to wear in the summertime at the beach or whatever. So I think I'm going to keep this one um, 
like I said, for summer, summertime situations. I don't think I'm going to wear it for Easter, though. Does it have pockets? It does have pockets! You got to go for the dresses with pockets. Okay, the last one is this navy blue and white situation. She's got three-quarter length sleeves, um, and it's a, not a true wrap dress, but it's a faux wrap. And then there's a tie on the side. I do like the gathering here because of my tummy. Um, I think this is cute. I It's not really what I'm looking for for Easter, but I do think it's cute. Um, like a cute summery dress. And I like that it can be more modest. You can kind of pull it up. There's no snap though. I really do appreciate the snap. Um, and wrap dresses are so much easier to nurse in. That's the problem with this dress is it will be really hard to nurse in. So that was my little try on. Let me think here. I've made a plan. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and return. This is my favorite one um, all in all, but like you saw, it is too tight across my chest. So I'm going to return it and exchange it for a um, an extra large. So it's the next size up. And then I'll see if I like that. If that one doesn't work, then I'm going to go ahead and get this one because I really do like this one. It's not my favorite print of all time. Um, I think I'll get it probably in the light blue color. So I have a good option because if this one doesn't work out in the next size up, then I'll go with this one. Um, I'm going to return this one. I don't care for it. This one didn't fit me well, but I thought it was cute. Um, I'm going to keep this blue one for the summer because I think it's really fun and I love it. It will be great for church or you know, I can put a little cardigan or something on it. And it's like perfect. And um, this one I like. And if I worked in like a corporate setting, I feel like it'd be a really good spring and summer corporate outfit because it's modest, but comfortable, stretchy, whatnot. But um, I don't work in a corporate setting. So I work for myself. So I'm getting rid of that. So I'm going to keep this one, return everything else, exchange this one for the next size up. And I'll let you guys know where I land with all of that. But I will link all of these six below in case any of them are interesting to you. I think almost all of them I know like these two have like dozens of fabric options. So if you like the cut, but you want a different fabric, they have a bunch. I don't remember about some of the other ones. I think this green one had several fabric options. So um, lots of different patterns and colors and choices. If you like the cut of it in general and you want to give it a shot and you can do it on the Amazon Prime try before you buy where you don't even have to pay for it up front. You just they ship it to you and you can try it on just like I did. So there you go. I just put on comfies like sweatpants and I am going to go see if Nora wants to go take a nap with me because I am very tired and ready for one. Good morning. It's whoa. <laughs> it's Monday now and Nora has on the cutest outfit, but she's trotting around the house. All right, Nora, are you ready to go get in the car? Yeah. Come on. She has her Minnie Mouse shirt on and a red bow and a jean jacket. Is that your Minnie Mouse shirt? We are going to drop Charlie off at the groomers and then we're going to story time. Do you want to go to story time? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Yay! <laughs> Here is Charlie before. It is high time, Charlie Bear. You ready to go to the groomers? You are? Let's go. You went down on your tummy. Yeah. Editing Blair here to pop in and say that you will notice my skin throughout this vlog is very flaky and peely and that is because I have been using, I have since stopped, but I have been using a product that I did not know had retinol in it, which is the facial oil that I've been using with my, you know, for my nightly gua sha routine. And retinol sometimes causes retinol rash and I have very fair skin and it certainly causes it for me. And so using it, every single night has caused lots of flaking and peeling around my mouth and on my eyelids in particular. So you will notice that throughout this vlog. We are on the road to recovery here. But if you're sensitive, then maybe don't use that product. I've just been, I've switched over to just using pure jojoba oil and have noticed that we are getting a slow improvement. But 
I've got retinol rash this whole entire vlog, so I apologize for that. Hello, it is the afternoon now here on Monday. Riley's texting me. Um, I feel like I'm a hot mess. I just, Nora was having a hard time falling asleep for her nap, so I laid down with her in our bed because um, it's a lot easier than laying down with her in her toddler bed, which is the size of a crib mattress. And um, my makeup is all smeared and just... I looked better this morning, <laughs> but not that much better. Um, it's been a good morning. We went to story time, which is always so much fun. Nora has such a great time there, and I've gotten to know several of the moms there and their kids, and it's like every other week, and we just have a really nice time. And um, before we went there, we dropped off Charlie at the groomer. I'll have to show you him. He's taking a nap right now, but he looks so cute. I told her to go really short and do like a summer haircut. Um, and she did. And he looks like a whole different dog. I prefer him fluffy, but his fur mats so easily that it really is better for him, especially in the summer and the spring right now. Like it's raining outside today. It's actually really rainy. I had no idea they were calling for rain this week. Um, so anyway, Charlie's groomed. We did story time and both kids are currently taking their naps. Hallelujah. It's been a good day. One thing that's really interesting about regularly vlogging is that I can see each week when I'm editing that week's vlog, like where my mood was. And it was interesting because when I was editing last week's vlog, I noticed that I felt like I was really low energy. And then I was thinking about it in the past few days. I'm like, I do feel really low energy and just kind of like my mood is really low. I have not been secretive or private at all about the fact that I really struggle with postpartum depression after both kids I have. And I have gotten on medication both times and I'm currently still being medicated for postpartum depression. And the medicine definitely helps like night and day difference for sure, but I'm still struggling with my mood and all the hormones and the hormonal shifts postpartum continue for so long. And then there's a whole nother round of them once I, you know, wean Colin from nursing, um, which I would like to do probably sometime between like 15 and 18 months, ideally. Um, and so I, th I, that there's that piece of the puzzle, but also every time I come home from a trip up to Maryland, like I just did last week, I feel like my mood crashes a little bit because it's so fun to be up there and seeing all my family and every day is different. And, um, it's like fun, you know, every day is like full of fun. And a lot of the responsibilities of day to day life are just not a part of life when you're like away on a vacation, you know? And so it's just so nice. And then you come home and I feel like reality hits you in the face pretty hard. At least it does for me. So I've just been feeling kind of low. Um, and so Riley and I put the kids to bed last night and we sat down and had a long conversation about that. And I said, I really think one of the reasons is like, I feel like I never get a break. Um, which is not totally true, but it's how I feel. It just feels like I'm on 24 seven because when the kids are napping, it's such a brief, short period of the day and um, they don't always take a synced nap. But as you know, I've been really working on it. Um, and during this time, I'm usually folding laundry, prepping for dinner, doing the dishes, tidying up the house. And so I'm trying to be better about like relaxing during their nap time, but it's hard because all those things I just mentioned are made so much easier when they're sleeping. So anyway, we discussed um, maybe hiring someone to come in maybe one day a week, just in the morning or just in the afternoon. The hard part is with Colin still exclusively nursing and not really taking a bottle very well at all. I can't really be apart from him for more than three or four hours at a time. And so Riley's like, well, let's just work with that. Let's see if we can find someone to come in. So at least, you know, you have like one morning a week that you can go work if you want to work or you can go get a coffee and sit like and just take a breather. Um, because as many of you know, motherhood is very much 24 seven, you know, you go all day and then you put the kids to bed and there's uh, people don't talk about nighttime parenting, but there's a lot that goes into nighttime parenting you know, between kids waking up and needing to be settled back down. Of course, Colin needs to nurse throughout the night and just all of those pieces of the puzzle, bad dreams, or I mean, there's just a million different things that happen just like during the day. Nighttime parenting is a big piece of it. And so it's not like at eight o'clock, we're done until 8am. It's not like that. 
So anyway, I've just been trying to kind of figure out where I am, why my mood has been low and I've just felt super drained. Even when I'm getting a lot of sleep, I still feel super drained. Um, like yesterday, I took a really long nap in the afternoon. I had told you guys yesterday I was hoping to do that and I accomplished my goal. Um, and I woke up and I was still so tired and I said, I just think it's beyond just needing sleep. Like I'm an introvert and I need some recharge time and it's been challenging to find that. So I know of one woman who was looking for some side gig sort of nanny babysitting jobs. So I'm going to shoot her a text today and just see what her schedule's like and see if we could try out doing like once a week in the morning or something like that. Like I mentioned, I feel like that it's raining outside of my hair is like gotten so frizzy. Um, I feel like something like that could work out really well for our family. Um, I just feel like such a mess, right? <laughs> my hair was like in a big bun on top of my head. And so I took it down before I filmed this and that was probably the wrong choice. Probably just keeping it up would be better because getting the kids in and out of the car today at the groomer and then at the story time, I just got drenched. Um, it's rain. It was raining really hard. So that's where I am with like mental health and just feeling a little bit low right now, feeling really drained and looking forward into the rest of spring and summer and just trying to figure out a way to have a little more pep in my step. And I, I definitely think that having a little bit of time off each week during the waking hours, um, would be good because by the time the kids are both in bed at night, I am exhausted. I am like, washing my face, gua sha my face, <laughs> brushing my teeth and going to bed, showering some nights. And um, there's not a lot of time, like I'm not going and running errands. I'm not doing any, it, it just feels like, like the most basic level of self hygiene is what I'm doing during that time. So all of that. In parenting news in our home, um, we decided to get rid of Nora's tablet. So she has like a little Kindle Fire tablet. And when she got it, the only thing that we used it for was travel. So long car trips or plane rides. And we downloaded like some of her favorite videos onto it, like little sing-songy videos and a couple little games and things. And when we would be, like I said, on a long, long car trip or on a plane, she would get it and it was like a special treat and it would captivate her and it was great. After Colin came, it became something that went from a tool, like a useful tool, to a crutch. And we were giving it to her just more and more, um, more than I wanted to. And I just kept saying, well, Colin's so young, you know, it's like this is because it would keep her attention. You know, she could watch her little stuff on her tablet and it would keep her attention long enough that I could like get a couple things done, nurse Colin, whatever. Well, now Colin's five months old and I was hoping to have weaned her off it and use it again just only for as a tool for travel by the time that Colin was about three months old and he just turned five months. So I'm like, all right, we're overdue for this. It's never going to be easy. It's just time to do it. So last night, actually yesterday morning, we took it away. So let's just start on Sunday. And so we took it away. We put it away and we said, you know, it went night night, you know, and and she's been like, kids are so great. She's been like great about it. She's asked for it like a couple of times and we're like, it just went night night, you know, we put it away and she's like, okay. And she finds something else to do. So I'm feeling good about that. I'm not against screen time, but it was being used, like I said, as a crutch instead of like a tool. Like I think there's definitely times during the day or week or whatever where it's useful, but it, it just had gotten a little bit out of control. So I'm glad to be back where I feel comfortable with that. Um, to where it's a perfect tool for long car rides and for flights or, you know, any time that we know we'll have to be waiting a long time, which there's not a lot of that. But like if we were to go to, if I were to take her and Colin for like a, a, a pediatrician appointment for just Colin, that might be a good thing to bring with me because she could watch her little things while I'm just talking with the pediatrician. Um, but yeah, I just, I felt like it was becoming such a crutch and such a big part of our day-to-day -day life. And I just wanted to to put a stop to it. So, um, that's that feeling really good about that. <laughs> you know, those are things where you're every day you go by and you're like, I really should do something about that. I really should make a change. And it's just feels like mm, that's going to be tough. I'm glad we did it. It really wasn't that tough. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go get a little snack, something to eat while the kids are sleeping. I'm going to go watch some TV of some kind and just breathe for a little while, 
goodness knows they'll probably be up in like the next 20 minutes, but 20 minutes to myself would be wonderful. Hello, I'm coming to you live from our very packed up car, Charlie Bear in the back seat, in the very back, and then our kids, and then me and Riley, because we just got alerts coming to our phones and watches that um, there is a tornado warning and um, my sister-in-law has a an underground storm shelter so we are going to shelter there until the tornado passes the joys of living in north texas um so it's actually like coming right for us <laughs> so we are hurrying the clouds are looking tornado-ish hey it's the first day of spring oh so this is perfect this is exactly what it's like in spring here Although I feel like last spring we really didn't have any. We usually only have like one or two serious like ones. Yeah. And this one's still like 70 miles away, but uh, it's moving fast. Yeah, it's it's moving fast. So we're going to be in the storm shelter Daddy. with her three children, her possibly possibly her husband. Sometimes her husband waits it out inside. Her probably her dog. My mother-in-law, it's gonna be a family affair, so I'll have to show you what it's like down there. My phone's blowing up, all my friends are like reminding each other to go shelter and whatnot, so that's what we're doing on this Monday afternoon. Well, it's like five o'clock this Monday evening. We're gonna go shelter in a tornado shelter for safety. Can you see the clouds and how dark they are over there? You can feel it in the air. So that's what we're doing. I'm thankful we have a safe place to go at least. Hey Riley, you want to give an update? Well, we've got a tornado oh on the ground, wrapped in rain. Ten miles from us. Twenty miles. Wait, you're right? No. Yeah. As the birds fly, it's fifteen miles. Oh, shut the door. <laughs> so we're in the um, so shelter. Here's no the lamb family. I mean, the McNamara family. Turns out I look better yeah. than I did for the party the other day. <laughs> In this little underground bunker. And we are so happy to be here. Yes, we really are. Oh. You could get one too. Oh, you just not I know, I've worked on it. All right, we just got home from that whole ordeal. Um, that was a really nasty storm. Like a really nasty storm. And um, I'm really glad we went to the shelter. The sirens did end up going off, and there was lots of hail and just a lot. So I'm in a group text with all of my local friends and several businesses were damaged, some homes were damaged, some people who live further out in the country, their homes and roofs were severely damaged. Our home is fine, which we're super grateful for and I'm so grateful that we were able to be in that um, storm shelter because obviously that kept us nice and safe. And Charlie was there with us too because you gotta bring your fur babies along. So there were 10 of us plus Charlie, It was, and it's a small storm shelter. But we're also glad to have a safe, safe place to go. So now that we're home, Colin's laying down to take a little nap. Nora just ate dinner. I want to go take a hot shower because it's it was like crazy, windy, gusty, cold rain just whipping. I mean, you can tell, like hot mess. Um, so I just, a nice warm shower would be perfect. <laughs> and some fresh clothes. My clothes are still wet. I came home and nursed Colin right away because he hadn't been nursed in the past couple of hours so <sighs> spring and fall in texas we get these storms and they are never fun good morning and happy tuesday from me and my colin i apologize if you can hear bluey nora is right behind me watching bluey this morning and um i am about to make a cup of coffee i have some cream in my warmer frother and my coffee's just about finished being brewed, and I there's not enough coffee in the world this morning. I feel like just because last night was so stressful, I didn't get a good night's sleep. And I was up tossing and turning like all night long. Um, I don't know if it was disjointed in the clips I was sharing, but what happened is as follows. They were calling for rain all day long, and so it was raining all day long. And we knew that, and that was obviously rain is not scary. And then I heard that they were maybe calling for some hail. And so I was like, oh goodness, like hail is no fun. Well, the hail turned into a tornado watch, which turned into a t tornado warning. But in our area, we have those a lot. Um, 
and it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to affect us. Well, last night was different because we were getting alerts like to our phones that were saying, you know, your location, your area is being affected. Um, and then we were watching the weather and the trajectory of the storm, which included several possible tornadoes, was heading straight for us. So when Riley got home from work, he came home early. He came home like half an hour. Well, he came home like an hour or 90 minutes early. And um, we, as you saw, rushed over to my sister-in-law's house who has an underground storm shelter. Thank God, I'm so grateful for it. Um, it's very, very small and there were 10 humans and Charlie in it. So, but I can't complain. I'm just so glad that we were able to go over there. I need a sip of coffee, hang on. I look forward to this every morning. Um, so we spent, I don't know, an hour to two hours in there. For some reason, this time we were able to get, we had cell phone signals, usually we don't, um, but we were able to track the radar and we could hear it, but we, we could track it and make sure that it was past us. But that storm shelter is like concrete, it's cold, it's damp, it's safe, but it's not comfortable at all. Um, and so by the time we got out, it was still like pouring down rain and we were like getting the kids and Charlie in the car. And so we all got soaked. Um, and they were picking up a few things around their property, like their grill had knocked over, the basketball goal had knocked over. Um, I don't know, a few things, but it, it really wasn't bad. Oh, the daddy and Bluey are going on a walk. You love doing that with your daddy. So we, on the drive home, I was getting all these texts from my friends and a town east of us got hit much harder. There was a t tornado on the ground there and several people were sending pictures of like their friend's house or their cousin's house or their business or whatever that was like really, really, really hit hard. So it's just a really sad situation. Um, we're grateful our house was not affected and of course, most importantly, we were safe, um, but it's just very stressful. It's very stressful, and I guess they're still like looking at, at the damage and whatnot. Um, I've had people continuously like updating in our little text thread different things that have been damaged and stuff, because the winds I think were like 70, 72 miles an hour or something crazy like that. So anyway, it was just as obviously a stressful evening that I wasn't, nobody was anticipating. Um, and we're just so grateful that we have a safe place to go. When we got home, I took a nice long hot shower and got into cozy clothes, changed the kids into warm clothes. I blew dry my hair. We ate some good meals for dinner and then um, we just took like an early bedtime, but I could not sleep. I was like up all night and I wasn't, it wasn't even like stress and anxiety about the tornado. I think it was, I think my nervous system was just shaken up from having to like do all that. So anyway, I'm fine this morning. I'm grateful for my coffee. I'm gonna go sit on the couch and watch Bluey and drink my cup of coffee with my kids. Um, weather stuff can be so stressful and so impactful. Um, so if anybody is watching this who was impacted by the tornadoes more than us, who lost, you know, had damaged or lost property or anything like that, I'm so sorry. Um, and I hope that you and your family was safe. It's definitely a scary thing. So I just showed you how I have been doing my hair lately. Um, it works super well if you have very long hair. My hair is down at least to my boobs past them really. Um, it's very, very long right now and um, curling it can take a super long time. But if you put it in a, if you don't have too, too many layers, if you put it in a ponytail on the top of your head as I just showed you and then you just curl all the pieces of that ponytail, 
um, let them cool, spray them with hairspray, and then shake them out, you get something like this. And I think it's a really pretty look. It's like curled. It was easier to do than like doing each individual piece. And um, I'm really, I've really been liking it. So I really, really love long hair for me. I actually adore short hair on other people and I have tried to go short many different times and I just, it's not for me. I, I'm not good at styling it. I don't have the right face shape. It's just not for me. Um, but having long hair, <laughs> Definitely means that I, I'm just opening up the blinds, definitely means that I have to like style it um, or it just feels like heavy. And um, this is one of my favorite ways to do that. Oh, Charlie Bear. This is definitely one of my favorite ways to do that. I also, why are daddy's glasses up here? Was that you, Norma? I also really like um, just blowing it out straight. But this is, my, if I have time, curling is my favorite. Yes, Norma. You wanna play Peppa with me? Yeah. Okay, let me put Daddy's glasses back because I don't know why they're up in your playroom. Hmm. Anyway, so that's that. Um, I'm just wearing, this shirt is from my shop. It's a navy blue seashell on a white crew neck sweatshirt. Um, I had someone order last week, oh, I don't have my rings on. I had someone order last week a navy blue quarter zip and she asked if I would do the seashell in white and it turned out so, so cute. So I might start offering that regularly, but if you want the seashell in white on any different color um, sweatshirt or t-shirt even, just leave me a note at checkout and say, can you make this, this, oh no. Say, can you make the, the seashell white? And I'd be happy to. Okay, I'm gonna play. Oh, you want mommy, where's your chairs? We better find them. I'm gonna play with Nora for a little bit, for a little bit. Um, Colin's oh, taking his morning nap. And I might text our friends and see if they wanna come over and play today. Because it's really cold outside after that tornado brought in the cold front. But um, she does really well if she has a couple hours of playtime with friends, so. I just wanted to show you my little hair, <clears throat> hair hack because I, it really like makes things so much faster and easier, I think, especially with super long hair, just because it's a lot of it. Here is what we are currently doing. Nora is running in circles around Colin. What are you doing, Nora? I... Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> Did you hit the door? <laughs> this is her, one of our favorite activities. Why don't you close the door, Nora? Nora? No, I didn't. But if you clo close this door so that you don't run into it anymore. Well done. Also, my bath caddy is inexplicably in Colin's room on the floor. Mommy, mommy, and I think mommy, I know mommy. who might have done that. Running. Are you running? <laughs> Colin, Colin doesn't even know what's going on, Nor Nor. You're silly. I just took inventory of everything up here and ordered a bunch more and I'm running a big sale through the end of March so make sure you check it out. Good morning from me and Nora. Nora is making alphabet soup this morning, aren't you? Taking the lid off. Clearly the uh-oh, the stovetop is not on. But she did this all on her own. She came in here and went into the cabinet and got that colander and then <laughs> put all her little alphabet letters in it and then asked me for the salt and pepper and the spoon. Are you cooking? Yeah. <laughs> that is going to be some yummy. Oh, you want me to turn it on? No. No, that's right. No, because it's hot, right? So that's what she's up to this morning. Good morning. So while Nora is cooking up, where is she? There she is, some alphabet soup. I thought I would catch you up on everything that's been going on. So last night I went up to my office for an hour and then Riley's studio for an hour with the purpose of taking inventory and restocking and I did that. That's what I did. So um, I ordered a whole bunch of fresh 
short sleeve shirts to restock. Um, I've been wanting to do it for a while, but as many of you know, there have been major supply chain issues, major for almost a full year now. It started about last May or June, and it's April. No, it's March. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. But anyway, I got that taken care of, so um, I'm having a free shipping sale through the end of March at, in my shop, and the Cold Coffee Social Club shirt that I showed in last week's vlog is 30% off and free shipping, and all of my sale items are 50% off, so make sure you go check out all of that if you are interested. It will go fast. I'm going to try to replenish as much as I can based on availability in stock, um, but just so you know, that's the story there. So today, um, Riley just left for work. Obviously, Nora's cooking us up some delicious breakfast. Um, I just made a cup of coffee for myself. We're gonna get some breakfast and just kind of um, get our day going gently. It's still pretty chilly outside from that cold front that the storms brought in. So that's that, welcome to our Wednesday. I had two things that I needed to get done up here at my office. <laughs> so I brought the kids with me which is always an extremely interesting experience. Nora, what are you doing? What? What are you doing? Whoa! <laughs> so here's how it's going. I'm sitting here nursing Colin. I did get those two things done. Nora's playing, and then we're going to pack up and head home. Red Y. Where does it go? Good job. Where does it go? It's the very first letter. Nora? <laughs> Are you trying to be silly? Yeah. Yeah, you know where the A goes. That's right. Did you discover your hands in the last couple of weeks? Oh, what are your hands? Oh, what's that? Oh, do you want me to give you back these beads that you were chewing on? Oh. That's right. Yeah. Good morning and happy Thursday from me and Colin and Nora. Hi, Nora, Nora. She's always moving furniture around. <laughs> Um, it is about, I think, 10.30 a.m. now. Colin actually just woke up from his morning nap, so we have been going here for a little minute. Riley, of course, is over at work, and I had a hot cup of coffee and a bowl of cereal and answered some emails and some Etsy conversations this morning um, while Colin was napping. Nora's dressed. You're in fresh clothes, too. I'm telling you, y'all, these magnetic me sleepers... I bought him several in like the newborn or the zero to three month size. And then when he outgrew them, I bought a bunch. I think I bought four or five more in the three to six month size. And as he's starting to outgrow these, he will be getting the six to 12 month size. They are wonderful. They're, they make changes so quick and easy. They're so comfy in the materials like that really soft, soft, stretchy material. So we love the Magnetic Me. I'll link them below. I don't think they have any kind of discount referral program or anything like that, but if they do, I will certainly link it so you can get a discount. Um, but I don't remember seeing anything like that. I usually look for that on products that I use and love. <laughs> You're so cute. It is chilly again outside today. Um, it's going to hit, I think, 60 degrees is the high, so obviously that's not chilly, but most of the day it's like in the 40s, and so not cold, but chilly, you know, chilly. Um, next week it's gonna be like the high is like 85 almost every single day, so it will not be, it will not be chilly. That's like true spring in Texas. Let me put this, prop this camera up because it's hard to hold a baby in one hand and the camera in the other. We have relocated to Colin's nursery because Nora has decided she wanted to play in here. Um, and at least I can rest my arm here on this 
on this chair. The last time I filmed in here, I think, was when I was telling Colin's birth story about how you came fast and furious. So I have been really struggling, as I mentioned earlier in this vlog. Oh, I'm struggling even more now because the battery light just flashed. Mama. I'm gonna go change the battery. <laughs> okay, hello. <laughs> I just changed my camera battery and Colin's playing on the floor with a couple of toys. Um, I mentioned earlier in this video that I've been struggling with my mood. I just feel really low. I truly think it's a combination of different things. Um, <laughs> the list goes on of different hypotheses that I have of why right now I'm just struggling a lot day to day. Um, but I'm feeling very unmotivated. I'm having a hard time keeping up with like the house and chores and things just because I just feel so sluggish. I'm just really exhausted. Part of that is that I have had really bad, sorry, she stole my shoe. You can take mommy's shoes. Really bad sinus issues ever since I got pregnant with Colin. If you've been around since last spring, I got pregnant with him in mid-January, I think. Um, and by the time it was around this time last year, I was struggling so, so much. I had a very severe case of what's called, sorry if this is bumpy, she's picking up my feet and putting them in my shoes. <laughs> I had a really severe case of pregnancy rhinitis, which is just like severe inflammation of the nasal passages and sinuses. And um, pregnancy in and of itself is sort of like a process of inflammation, which is why you're not meant to take ibuprofen which is an anti-inflammatory while you're pregnant because it's dangerous for you and anyway so there's really very very little that i could take during my pregnancy now i take a daily allergy medication and have for years i mean like since high school or middle school um i took Zer um claritin for a while now i take zyrtec so it's not that i'd not it's not like environmental allergens that takes care of that really well. And I took that throughout both of my pregnancies because I have such bad allergies. But this rhinitis situation and the inflammation is different. And I probably need to go to like an ENT or an allergist or maybe both and try to figure out like a path forward with this because it has been the most frustrating, exhausting thing, especially when I was pregnant with Colin. Um, Oh my gosh, it was so miserable. I felt like I had the worst, heaviest head cold for like three or four months. It was awful. Like that fullness where you can't breathe out of your nose and you feel it in your head and in your sinuses. Like I had that with him for so long and it was just really, really challenging and exhausting and I wasn't sleeping at night because of it. It cleared up some um, and now it is like back in full force. So it's exhausting. Like feeling like you have a heavy head cold is exhausting. The kicker is I cannot take any decongestants while I'm breastfeeding because a decongestant will also dry up your milk. So that's really what would help me is taking like a Sudafed or something like that or like a Claritin D or Zyrtec D, something that has a decongestant in it and I cannot take that. So I do all the things. Of course I do my gua sha and that does help alleviate, but it's very temporary. I do sinus rinses with like a neti pot all the time. Um, I, I do all the things, a humidifier at night, like all of that, but my sinus issues are just really bad. And I can feel how heavy and swollen my sinuses are some days. And like last night I didn't sleep because of it. So all of that contributes to a low mood too because feeling sick, even I'm not sick, it's like my sinuses are just inflamed. It's just a really extremely frustrating situation. So anyway, I've got to figure this out. I've got to, I've got to get to some kind of doctor or something. Um, I know there are like things they can do that are more surgical. I don't know if that would be an option or like even necessary at this point. I don't know. I just know that um, all I want to do is take like super strong decongestants and I can't. And um, in fact, when I was weaning Nora, I did take Benadryl. Um, because at that time I was pregnant with Colin and I was experiencing this and I knew I was, you know, we were on the process of weaning and it dried my milk up very, very quickly. So I know for sure that I can't go that route because I'm not ready to wean Colin yet. He's only five months. So there's that. Struggling with my mood and really struggling with sinus issues and sinus pressure and just 
you know that feeling? Like feeling like you have a head cold? It makes you just wanna lay down under the covers. In fact, last night when Riley got home from work around six, I said, I have got to go lay down. I, my head just feels so heavy, I'm just exhausted. So I went and took a nap and then woke up and we had dinner together. Riley made soup, which was, he made like this delicious tortellini soup. He's just awesome. He just steps up and fills in the gaps throughout all of my craziness. Oh, you lined up all your toys? Yeah. What are they doing? Yeah. So life, as you know, is never all sunshine and rainbows. Life is really good right now, but I am just dragging along a little bit, feeling like a little bit like Eeyore this week. Um, and then with this head sinus nastiness, it's just like really tiring me out. So I don't know. I've got to go get Charlie and if you can hear him barking, I just let him out and he's ready to come back in. But that's sort of where we are today. I did go and work yesterday, which was great. I might go and work today. And my friend just texted me to see if I wanted to get together with her for our kids to play, which would be good, I think, to get out, go do something fun. So welcome to our Thursday. Hello. After um, dinner tonight, I was feeling very stir crazy. So instead of placing a grocery pickup or delivery order for tomorrow, which was my original plan, I ended up just going out and grocery shopping because I needed to get out of the house and um, it was great. It's always fun to see what new things they have. So I put away all of the groceries with the exception of just a handful of things because none of it's that exciting, but these things are a little more exciting. So I thought I would show you. This Love Crunch granola has become my obsession. I've not tried that kind. This is the kind that I have bought over and over again. It's the dark chocolate macaroon and it's like organic dark chocolate and shredded coconut. It's so good. I absolutely love this. And I had seen this and never bought it. And then in person when I saw it, it is dark chocolate peanut butter. I can't wait to try that with vanilla yogurt and like a cut up banana. That sounds so good. So I got that. We bought the um, Sonic drink mix in ocean water, which is like a blue coconut drink. I think it's blue coconut syrup in Sprite when you get it at Sonic. And we bought it in one of these little like sugar-free packet situations. And I'll show it to you actually, because I have it here. It is so good. So when I saw that they had the cherry limeade too, I was like, well, we have to get that, of course. So here's the ocean water one. Um, and so we have really enjoyed it. And so I got the cherry limeade one. So hopefully this one is as good as the other one because the other one is great. Then along those same lines, I got a big thing of Chick-fil-A sauce. If you've been following, then you know that I have been, we have been making those delicious um, chicken tenders, frozen chicken tenders in the air, in the air fryer. Nora's really excited right now. Um, and that has been so delicious, but ketchup is not my favorite for dipping chicken tenders in. I really prefer some kind of sauce, like a honey mustard sauce. And so when I saw this on the shelf, I was like, that will fit the bill. So got a thing of Chick-fil-A sauce. If you're not familiar with Chick-fil-A sauce, it's sort of like a mix between barbecue, honey mustard, and ranch maybe. Riley's nodding. Something like that. It's, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I think like online recipes that are like the easy, I made it like the whole way where you add like mayonnaise and a little bit of this and a little bit of that and seasonings. But I think the like shortcut is like half honey mustard, half barbecue sauce, I think. Um, I forget, but it's really good. And then the last thing that was interesting in my grocery pickup, or I mean grocery haul or shopping trip, or at least laughing at me, I'm really tired, <laughs> were these bagels. So these are just little mini bagels. I buy these a lot, just the plain version, but these are chocolate chip. And maybe a little known fact about me is that my very favorite breakfast in the entire world is a fresh chocolate chip bagel toasted with plain cream cheese. We don't have any bagel places around here. Um, where I'm from in Maryland, there are many, many, many delicious homemade like local bagel joints within like a five mile radius of my parents' house of where I grew up. And I absolutely love a chocolate chip bagel toasted with plain cream cheese. It's my sister's favorite too. So whenever I'm in town, we always go get them. But I have never seen chocolate chip bagels in the grocery store. Now these will not hold a candle to like fresh local bagel bakery situations, 
but I figured I would give him a shot. Nora likes eating bagels with me in the morning. Um, we'll like split one of the mini ones or I'll give her one or whatever because they're little and they're perfect a perfect size for breakfast or lunch for her. So I was excited about that. So those are the fun things that I got. Oh, one more thing. I got um, a cute dress for her and a cute pair of shorts. So I'll show you that too. Mm -hmm. Okay, here is the dress I got her. It is by this brand, Modern Moments, which I think it says on the tag is by Gerber, and it's like a 100% cotton dress. And it's like a light bluish mint color with daisies all over it. Is that adorable with these little wooden buttons? I thought that was so cute. So I picked that up for her. And then I picked up these little shorts. I thought they were so cute with like a little pink shirt or a little blue shirt or even like a little purple shirt and a bow during the summer. So, so cute. So there's two more little fun things that I got her on my little Walmart trip. Good morning. It is Friday. I am feeling refreshed and my mood has been lifted since yesterday. It's amazing what getting out of the house can do for a girl. I went to Walmart last night for like 90 minutes and just being alone and grocery shopping and just walking through that store and it was just Walmart really just gave me a fresh wind. <laughs> I needed to get out of the house and go do something. Um, we did have friends come over and play with us yesterday for a few hours, which was also super nice because while the kids played, my friend and I were able to sit and chat and talk and it was just like, it's always so nice to have adult conversations. So I'm feeling a lot better today. I just dry shampooed my hair and I, first of all, I love the Dove like brunette dry shampoo. I forget exactly what it's called. If I can find it online, I'll link it below. I think it's great. It doesn't leave any like streakiness because it has now, obviously, if you're a blonde, don't use it. But if you have darker roots like me or if you have darker hair, um, I love it because it doesn't leave a white cast. Um, so I sprayed that throughout, like, my scalp, my head. And then I hit my hair with the um, that new Revlon Style Pro, which I am falling more and more in love with every time that I use it. And it, like, activates it or something. I just feel like my hair feels so fresh right now, even though it's like day three or four hair. I wash my hair twice a week. Um, so that's, that's the story there, but we are heading into the weekend now. I am so excited, so excited about the weekend. <laughs> um, having Riley home, getting to spend some family time. It's supposed to be gorgeous outside. I think right now it's in the seventies already. Um, today, so it's going to be nice and warm today and nice and warm this weekend. It should be just lovely. While I'm standing here in our den in front of the TV, I, first of all, there's a piece of hair on my face that's driving me nuts. Okay, I think that's kind of, yeah, it's better. You know when you can feel one singular hair and you're like, this hair has got to go. Okay, I want to talk about TV. I have been watching a lot of TV in the past few weeks. During nap time, I've just been feeling pretty unmotivated to get housework done, so I've been watching an episode of an episode or two of something, and then in the evening, I've been watching an episode or two or something. So I have blazed through three different series. So the first one's one that I've talked about already, I think in last week's vlog, um, which is Inventing Anna, which is a series on Netflix. The reason why it piqued my interest is because it was produced and I believe written by Shonda Rhimes who I really, really love her work. And um, it was a really good series. I loved the way that it was like filmed and done. It's based on true events, but then they added some spice into the story um, about a girl, a woman, who basically pretended to be a German heiress and moved to New York City and just lived life as if she had so much money and raised money and was going to start this whole like social club and all this stuff. And it was all a fraud. So it's really interesting story. I do feel like it was like a couple of episodes too long. Like the story I felt like could have been told in a little bit of a shorter time frame, but it was a fun, it's pretty lighthearted given the seriousness of like the crime. <laughs> um, it's a pretty lighthearted show. I enjoyed it. If you like Crazy Rich Asians, the movie, it has a lot of the same vibes of just high society, luxury, that kind of thing. Um, and I thought Crazy Rich Asians was a really fun movie to watch. I know it's also a book, but I didn't read the book. So that was Inventing Anna. 
The next one I watched is probably my favorite TV series that I have watched in a long, long, long time. And it's called Little Fires Everywhere and it's on Hulu. Now, the reason why I watched it, first of all, because the two actresses starring in it are Carrie Washington and Reese Witherspoon, and I am huge fans of both of theirs. But second to that, I had heard so much buzz about the book because it's the, the story is a book. And actually, the author of the book produced is one of the producers of the show. And um, I had heard so many people talking about how great this book is, Little Fires Everywhere. And just to be honest with you, in my life right now, reading is not a part of my day-to-day -day life that you can see and imagine why. By the time I'm sitting down, I just want to zone down and watch TV. I'm not, I'm just not interested in reading. I'll get back to reading, but right now I'm not reading a lot. So I thought, oh, well, I want to see the series. Um, and especially because the author helped produce it, I thought it would probably be pretty true to the book. Now, I don't know for sure, but it seemed like it probably would be more so than if someone else had produced it. Anyway, it is fantastic. I absolutely loved it. I was so captivated. Typically when I watch something, I'm also sort of like scrolling on my phone or answering some emails on my laptop or kind of doing some other kind of work. Not this show. It's a limited series. I think it's seven or eight episodes. And um, I would literally sit on the couch and just be locked into the TV and I would not be doing or seeing or looking at anything else because I was just captivated by the storyline. It is not light. Um, it covers so many different bases. I mean, so like class, race, motherhood, womanhood, marriage. I, I mean, like every hot button issue a person could fathom is wrapped up into this sexuality. I mean, it is like, it covers all of the like hot button things. I don't know how else to say it. So it's definitely not like a just like light watch, but it is like, it makes you think. It really makes you think. It's really interesting. I just really liked the way this story was told. In fact, ever since I finished the series, I think about it literally every single day. I think about different storylines within it. What I really loved is that it touched so much on womanhood and motherhood, especially to me motherhood, just because in this season of life, that's such a huge definer of what I am and who I am every day. Um, and just different women's experiences of motherhood and relationships with their children and everything around the motherhood storylines where it was like super captivating to me. But it is just... I just think it's super well done. So it's on Hulu. So if you don't have a Hulu subscription, you can get like a free one month trial. And I, if you like it as much as I did, you'll definitely finish it within that month. Um, so that's that. And then the third one is also on Hulu and I had not even heard anything about it. And it's called The Act. Um, and it is the story of Gypsy Rose, Gypsy Rose Blanchard and Dee Dee Blanchard, um, which if you don't know that story, that's a whole lot to get into. Um, but it is a reenactment of that, of the, their whole story. And it, I think it's really well done. It's really well cast. Um, I just really enjoyed, enjoyed watching through it. That's obviously like a heartbreaking story on every single angle. Um, but it was really interesting to see it in that way because I've only ever, I've only ever heard that story from a documentary, like true facts I've never seen it like played out like that. So that's that. Now, two, <laughs> you would think all I do is watch TV. Um, that's definitely been my, my thing. Every evening I've been watching several hours of TV. So I will admit to that. Two series that I'm currently watching um, that are being released episode by episode are The Thing About Pam, which is a true crime reenactment based on a podcast that I really enjoyed that's also called The Thing About Pam. Um, and then the other one is the dropout, which is the Elizabeth Holmes Theranos story. So if you don't know anything about that, yes, if you don't know the Elizabeth Holmes Theranos story, it will blow your mind. I recommend before watching the dropout is also reenactment. It's just like the act. Um, but before watching it, I would recommend watching the documentary on Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos, which is the craziest fraud story Ever. It is so mind boggling. And the um, documentary is called, it's called The Inventor, colon, Out for Blood. 
in Silicon Valley, I believe is what it's called. There's also a book on the story called Bad Blood. I have not read that. My mom read it. She said it's fascinating. So there are all my recommendations. Little Fires Everywhere is at the top of the list. I also enjoyed um, Inventing Anna. I also enjoyed The Act. And I'm currently enjoying The Thing About Pam and The Dropout. There's all the TV that I have to tell you about. Hello, we spent the afternoon over at our friend's house. She had pulled out, my friend had pulled out like a water play table and a whole bunch of toys um, and because it's such a beautiful day. And so we sat out there with them and just played and enjoyed it for several hours. And then when we got back home, both of the kids took really long naps, like double the length of time they normally nap just from running around outside in the sunshine. So it was a really nice day. Now I'm in the car with my husband and my kids in the back. And we are driving into the literal no middle of nowhere, Oklahoma, um, to go to this catfish restaurant, which is funny because I am not a big fan of catfish, but it's like a big thing around here at this time of year because, oh here, oh, it's called McGeehee's Catfish Restaurant. I'm sure someone watching this has been here. Um, oh, here we go. So anyway, that is what we are up to. It's um, been a tradition for Riley to go with his sister and brother-in-law well before they even have ki had kids. And they have, what, like a 10-year-old? Yeah. And so, oh, little baby, what are they called, foals? Yeah. So anyway, they've been doing that for years and years. And last year, Riley came, well, he's been every year, but he came last year with Nora. Um, and I was pregnant and sick and I stayed home. Remember that? Yeah. I was so sick because I was like still early pregnancy. So this year I'm going. I'm excited to see it. Riley said it's like just like a little hole in the wall, but it's just a really fun little atmosphere. It's on an old airstrip, I guess, and it's been around for a long time and it overlooks the Red River Valley. So I will show you guys when we get there. Riley, will you tell the story of what happened at Supercuts with the guy <laughs> with the band-aid? Yeah. Well, I was talking to my, um, my hairstylist lady about conspiracies and stuff so I think maybe that made this guy think about this but um I asked her the last time I had gone in I was like can you look up the last time I got a haircut because my hair was so scraggly and she went and looked in there and she was like I don't have she was like it shows the last time you were in here was 2019 and she's like that's not right at all you come in here whenever so we were she was trying to dig it up and this old guy was like sitting by the door at like a magazine and he had a band-aid going into his ear it was like <laughs> around and then the, the, the inside went in here that's the first thing that stood out to me and he was like looked at me and he was like goes to show you just how fast your identity can be taken <laughs> and i said yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he was pretty worried about me but I, you know i didn't know what to say to him because it was so weird so if you do online check-in for Supercuts, watch out because people are coming for <laughs> it you. It will not. Yeah, they're leaking your SSN and everything. <laughs> That's the first thing to go is your record of haircuts. <laughs> Before they get to the credit cards, they're like, wipe that out. <laughs> we don't want them to know how long they've had long hair. No. no. And they'll never ask the hairstylist when the last time they came in. <laughs> so they will never know. It's really funny. It does not seem like we are going to a restaurant right now. It's really out here. We've been driving for 40 minutes. Yeah. It's beautiful though. It's gonna be so beautiful in the spring and all the green. We have arrived at McGeehee's Catfish Restaurant. Here's what it looks like. There's so much I love about small town life these days. Little holes in the wall like this are so much fun. The people inside are so nice and the food's always delicious. So we're gonna go look over the overlook, huh, Rai? Look at Kali, he's sound, sound, sound asleep. Nora, where are we? Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, I see. So that would be full of water when, not full, but yeah, you can see a little bit of water down there. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at all that space. Our 
All right, I just got back from our catfish meal and this neck size up, so this is an extra large, this dress um, that I had showed you at the beginning of the vlog in this pretty blue and white floral print, just got in the mail. And I have some great, I actually put on shapewear underneath it so I could see if it was gonna work for me for Easter. I think it is perfect. I'm not sure about these shoes, but I really like the dress a lot. Um, and I'm glad I sized up because it has enough room in the chest now. Um, again, this is a true wrap dress. I will link it below. It was about 30 bucks. And I will link the shapewear below as well because I really like it. It helps hold it all in, especially, like I just, I mean, I had a baby five or six months ago. I still have a tummy. So, um, I think it's really pretty. I think this is gonna be perfect for Easter. I like that it has the modesty snap. Um, I like that it's blue because both of my kids are gonna be in bluey toned things, so we'll be coordinated. I like the little ruffle. It obviously needs to be steamed. I apologize for our messy bedroom. Um, the whole dress needs to be steamed, but I really like it. I think it's, you know, I'm not feeling my like greatest of all time in this part of my life, but it makes me feel good. It's feminine, it's flowy, it's perfect for Easter, I think. Um, and I think once, you know, like right now I'm like, you know, it's Friday evening. I'm like a mess, but with like fresh hair and fresh makeup, I think it'll be cute. So that's what I'm wearing. I'll link it below in case you're looking for an Easter or just like summer or spring wedding dress or something like that. I'm going to link the other ones that I didn't choose below as well in case any of those struck your fancy. Good morning and happy Saturday. I am about to make some cold brew. I was talking about this. Let's see if I can do it one handed. I couldn't even do it with my dominant hand. Um, but this is that Wandering Bear cold brew that I was sharing about in last week's vlog. I have the caramel and the vanilla um, flavored cold brew, and then they have all different kinds. They have mocha, they have even decaf. I'd really like to try that because I like to have something in the late afternoon and sometimes I don't want caffeine at that time. Um, so let's put a little bit of vanilla syrup in there and some half and half. Um, so I told you I would give a little review once I had had the chance to try it. Um, it is really good. It is strong coffee. So if you like weaker coffee, I don't think it would be for you. But if you like strong coffee that give that you know gives you a kick and is just nice and strong cold brew, I think you would really like it. Um, so I have, I believe it's 15% off. I will leave it linked below um, with my code or my link so you can give it a try. But like I said, it's definitely really strong. So if you don't like strong coffee, don't go for it. But it's good. It's smooth. It's really, um, it has like a very smoky, roasty flavor. It's really good. Um, so that is what I'm up to this Saturday morning. Hey guys, happy Saturday. I'm up here at my office about to edit this vlog, which you are currently watching. Um, so I have, you know, my footage going up onto my computer so I can edit it all and get it out to you for tomorrow morning. A few like housekeeping things. My Etsy shop is free US shipping. I'm offering free US shipping through the end of March. Um, so just a few more days of that. Um, all of my sale items are in my shop are 50% off and the cold coffee social club t-shirt is 30% off and free shipping so it's a really good sale and I just restocked a whole bunch of garments so if you have been looking for short sleeve t-shirts um, like this one this one says making magical memories this one is a Disney inspired design um, then this is the time. This is definitely the time to go order because there, my restocks have been fewer and farther between because of stock issues. So that's that. Um, I also have the 15% off code and link to the Wandering Bear Coffee, the cold brew, if you want to check that out. If you like strong cold brew, I think you would really like it. Um, like I said, they have a variety of different flavors, including a decaf, and I love that you just, they ship it to you, you just pop it in your fridge. Um, but it would also be good for like an office um, so that nobody has to, it's just like very easy and not messy, um, that sort of thing. I also will link everything below, all of the dresses from my Amazon Easter dresses. I'm so glad I found something. I sent a picture of it to my mom last night. She was like, oh, that looks great. And I'm like, I'm done. I'm good. I'm done for Easter. I ordered something for Colin for Easter. I'll probably show that in next week's vlog. And Nora has an, a cute Easter dress already. So, because um, I ordered two last year and we wore one. And so this year she will wear the other one. So that 
is that. I believe that is everything that I wanted to share with you. Of course, as always, everything that I've mentioned is linked below and um, all my like coupon codes and referral and affiliate links, all of that is linked below too. So like I actually have my Liquid IV with me right now, my Liquid IV 25% off and free shipping code, which is Blair Blogs. That's always below, all that kind of stuff. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me this week. I feel like I filmed a lot, so I think this has probably been a very long vlog. Thank you for watching. Um, I have a couple of fun things to share next week. So stay tuned. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.